Um, this conference will now be recorded. So that you can see how it functions, but like we're not going to fill all of them in or unless you guys want to stay till midnight. So. <laughs> but uh, no, I do. You. think. Yeah, I know. I, I want to cross stitch, but not till midnight. But this does make me go want to get a pattern I have and scan it in and try it. But OK, so. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is down at the bottom of page one, I'm going to flip over to share my screen. Share my screen and then we're going to go ahead and open our software up. And let me close that. Let me clean this up a little bit here. And um, I, I assume all you guys have taken the up, update to 1.2. You'll still be able to do the exercise, but if you haven't, there is an update out there um, if you haven't done it yet. Uh, okay, so let me make this a little, let me move some stuff around here. Uh, I think you have to take the samples. There's a couple more parts that you should update too. Not just the main one again? Right. Well, I just did them all except that one that I don't use. Okay. All right. Let me see if I can shrink this out of my way. No, I don't want to leave the meeting. Cancel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just get over on that side. I got too much. Okay. All right. All right. So. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and go to File New and open up your cross stitcher. New window. And then you're going to get your little drop down along the side. And my computer's slower than anything. Okay. So then you're going to scroll down over here and go ahead and click on create cross stitch. And we're going to do this about 50 times today, so you'll be able to do that really good. Okay, here's my cross stitch. All right. And then the first thing that's going to happen is your little uh, wizard page is going to uh, pop up. And the first one we're going to do is to create a quick cross design. So we're going to do that one first. So go ahead and say next. And then uh, load a picture. And we're going to browse to our samples. The heck is that? OK. All right, I don't know what that meant. Um, go to your samples and then go into embroidery samples. And then pictures under that. And we're going for sports two, which is a little uh, ping pong paddles. It's under embroidery pictures. It's not under the cross stitcher samples. Oh, yeah, pictures under um, embroidery sports, sports two dot PNG sports two. Oh, I see it. Sports two. Okay, I found it. Okay, mm -hmm. and then uh, you say okay, and it's going to kick off the wizard. And over here on the uh, left side under choose picture, we're going to take off the uh, auto level. Um, but this picture is in the software, it's perfect, you, so we don't need it on this. But if you're doing something on your own, you might need to put that adjustment on. 
So go ahead and click next. And then you're looking at your preview and we're gonna crop and rotate. But we don't really need to, it's already selected fine. So go ahead and say next. All right. So now we're on the design page. And the first thing we're gonna do is make some adjustments. So we're gonna change the cross size to 1.4. And uh, Gail has a bunch of tips in here. The smaller the, the cross, the more detail you will get in resolution. So then we're gonna select a hoop. And we're gonna select a hoop uh, 120 by 120. So, and then we want the orientation to be natural. Natural and next. Yep, next. Finish. Finish. Say okay, and then go ahead, next and finish. And voila, you just made a cross stitch faster than anybody. Well, that's hers. Okay. So we went past the color page and finish. And there you go. You have a cross stitch. Wasn't that easy? I lost my. I lost. Where'd you, where'd you lose them at? I you know. I, I, I had it all done and I clicked to make it smaller and it went away. I don't even know where it went. Oh, no. Is it Look on the look up, Liz. Look here on your bottom toolbar and see if it's sitting there. Yeah, I think I look. found. Okay, okay. But I can't make it smaller. It was covered. Wait, 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 I think I am. Wait a minute, I got it done. Okay, never mind. Keep going. I'm fine. I'm, I'm okay. Okay. So um, the last one on page two was we got that blue all the way around the paddles, which we probably don't want there. So across the top toolbar here we're going to go to create and your this is in cross stitcher so we're going to create in cross stitcher and um we're going to put on the eraser so we're going to click on the eraser up on the top and then we're going to click on let me see here oh oh make sure sorry before you click on that eraser and start erasing stuff, you want to click on this blue one. Okay, then go to create. It doesn't say that. And make sure you have the blue color right here beside the eraser. Do you see that? Because if I would have left it at the white where the ping pong ball is, it would only took the ping pong ball out. So make sure the color you want is right there under the file where it says file. So now we're gonna click on cross flood fill. Cross foot, try to say that. Cross flood, can you say that for me, Sue? Cross flood fill. Empatha, <laughs> hello. She's not listening to me. Okay, so <laughs> click on that. All right, and now all you're gonna do is drag your cursor around and look, the blue is all gone. Right click to delete the cursor. I was trying to help you, get you to help me with my words. Cross fill flood. Isn't there a way to get all the blue? What's that? And it got rid of them all at once. Did you see that? Yeah, but can't you get all that blue at the same time? I did. How? Watch, I'll undo it, Liz, and then I'll do it again. Okay. Okay, so see, it's all there. Uh -huh. Then I click erase, and I go to cross flood fill, and uh, as soon as I click on that blue, it took it all out. Oh, I had mine on full cross, okay. 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 All right. Oh. 
So then make sure you uh, click to release the tool. Why can't I release it? Okay, it's not releasing the tool. Uh, I'm not erasing either, uh, Carol. Oh, wait a minute, forgot something again. There we go, I'll try it. Nope, mine's not erasing. Well, my, was... mine erased it, but now I can't get rid of the tool. <laughs> oh, well, it's on the fill, okay. Oh, it's on the fill. Yeah. Okay. Is so, go ahead. Is that where it's supposed to be on the fill? Yeah. Well, I'm going to switch to another tool, so it should be okay, as long as you got rid of your background. No, I didn't. It's not getting rid of it. Okay, so let's try it again. Liz, go over there on your design panel and click on the blue color i got a blue color the blue, right and then go up there and click on erase right beside the blue color okay and then go to cross flood fill okay and then go down where your blue is and click and drag and it should wipe it all out doesn't do anything Can I, can I delete on this? No, it doesn't have a delete. Yes, it does. Let me delete and see what happens. Well, yeah, you could do that. Let's go back a ways. Go ahead. I, I'll catch up. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and zoom in on uh, the little white ping pong ball. So I'm gonna grab my ma I'm gonna grab my magnifying glass down here off the bottom, zoom to the rectangle, and I'm just gonna click and drag that around the ping pong ball. Okay. So now we can um, see that you see the background picture. It would be better if we put some more crosses in there to make it look better. So what we're going to do is over on the design panel, we're going to click on the uh, white. Well, first we're going to do pick a color, sorry. So at the bottom, which I got to move you guys around, down at the bottom of your design panel, you see the little eyedropper where my mouse is on the right? You're going to click on that eyedropper and then we're going to click on a white X anywhere over here. And now that's the color that I have. So we probably want to put in some quarter crosses here. So I want you to just do a couple of these so you get the idea. So I'm going to click on that quarter cross and I'm going to come over here and click. Oh, maybe oh. it's not working. Uh, oh, excuse me. Oh, I was probably, thank you, Judy. You're welcome. So then you're going to click on the quarter cross. Uh-oh, and then it flicked me back to blue. Don't do what I do. Do what I said. Okay. So let me go down here and pick my color again. Pick my color. And then I'm going to come over here on the white. And now I'm going to go over that guy again with... Is it doing it again? I'm going to go over that guy with the white. Let me see if it's picking the white. It's still picking the blue. Okay. I had to, go up to the top left. There you go. Yeah. I had to click on, on the color in the design panel for it to get rid of the blue. Okay. So you got the idea here? What's happening? You if you click in the different corners of the grid, it'll put a partial in there. So that's just showing you if you bring a picture in and let it auto cross stitch it, you can still go in there and do uh, small little piece parts to it. You know, the same way you could go over and take a look at one of the paddles. And just for example, I'll do one more thing on the panel paddle just so you can see it 
So we would go pick a color, we'd click up here on the red, and then I could do a quarter cross right in here. Or if you had a space where you knew you could put a, it doesn't have to be a quarter cross. I don't need a whole cross there, but I could put in a whole cross. So you would pick the style of cross you need. Okay. Yes. I'm not getting. I'm not getting a cro any crosses. I never had this trouble with cross stitch. Okay. Do you still have? Do you have the erase on still, Liz? Because that's what I had on and it wasn't working. Oh, well, how you get out of it? Oh, it's off. So now it's off. Okay. Okay, and then you you saw down here where you grab a color, grab the eyedropper, and then pick your color. Yeah, but then I get an X. Oh no! All right, okay, got it. I'm okay now. So we we did it with the full cross. We did a quarter, but you can use all these options up here if you needed them to fill in, which we're going to use when we do another one. So. Uh, if you want to save your lovely ping pong paddles, you can uh, go ahead and save them as um, table tennis. And just a reminder here, when we do a save as in the cross stitcher, it's going to save it. Check your file extension. It's going to save it as a KRZ. So it's still not an embroidery file until you export it. So you could save it. Um, and mine's going to go where it doesn't belong. I don't, you don't want it to go in here. If you're still set up to your defaults, it should roll into your My Designs. So you have any questions on that first, first little venture? So that one's bringing in a picture and let it auto digitize and then you go in and do some fine tuning. Okay, so I'm moving on to page four. And uh, on page four, this is where we're going to do one that we don't have enough hours in the day to do this whole thing. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and get um a new window again and we're going to open it back up in cross stitcher okay all right so this time we're going to use the second choice which is load a picture to make a uh, cross stitch design and you notice when you click these different ones on the wizard, it changes the way it looks here on the picture in case you forget what's going to happen. So go ahead and say next. All right. And now we're going to load a picture. So load a picture. And this time we're going to go to samples. And we're going to go into the cross stitch sam samples. And in the cross stitch samples, we're going to click on picks. And uh, we're going to pick the second picture, which is this one. And it has the bells. And this was taken with the cell phone to kind of let you know what you have to do if you took a picture of something with your phone and you need to get it to the right angle. So go ahead and select the one that says uh, Bell Phone Photo. And then go ahead and say OK. And then go ahead and say Next. All right. So this tool that we're going to use next, I can tell you I don't recall ever using this tool before. So what we're going to use is the tool that's called perspective. So you see how your.
kind of looking at the picture and it looks like it's angled back. So if we take that picture like that and try to drop it on the cross stitch grid, it's not going to, it's going to, you're going to have too many crosses. Things are not going to be lined up. So we're going to click on perspective. And then here's what I want you to do. I want you to watch me do it for a sec. You're going to grab each one of these little uh, corners one at a time and drag them so they're close to the grid. Okay, so you're going to grab each one and bring it in here. And this is really like zoom to the cursor in a second here when you're on the machine, when you think you're close, when you're precise positioning, but you're not really close. So I, I'm going to bring them all in. That's going to be step one. Now I'm going to take my zoom. And I'm going to click up here on this corner a couple times. And you can see that these red lines are not lined up on the picture. So I want you to take a couple minutes and kind of get them as close as you can on the picture, on the grid. Um, the closer you get, the better it's going to work when you tell it to pop onto your next screen. So I don't know how else to say it, but I can tell you I had to go back and start over 10 times because I couldn't undo after I got to where I was. So take a minute and try to get these guys as close as possible. Right on that grid. Hang on, guys. What? Oh, yeah, no. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, it's not. No, it's to uh, tell me which. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at least here, here, here. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. okay. That's okay. Oh, okay. So, uh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I'm telling them sorry, not you guys. I'm not sorry for you. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to. Oh, see how far off that is. How? Where do you go to get that side of of the picture to highlight? My right side to highlight it, not my left one. So did you click this perspective button? Yeah, I got the red lines, but I can't. How did you get this, your your uh, left screen to highlight instead of my right screen highlighted? My right screen zoom is bigger. What did you? Yeah. What? Oh, I was using the zoom up here at the top, Liz. See uh, right here? Oh. oh so oh. i click i click on it once uh -huh. and, and this one's making me crazy i i want to get to this other corner and then click on the on this thing and it'll highlight it click on the box and it'll highlight where we are so oh. i'm going to finish playing here all right i was pretty okay close. I'm gonna call that good. So it might make you seasick. I'm just warning you. So go ahead and say next. And uh, let me see here. I think we're making some adjustments here. Okay, we're gonna change our cross size to 1.8. And then, um, there's a little thing here that you can click on the help if you're a hand cross stitcher. And if you click on the help, it's going to bring up some pretty good information on what to do if you are a hand cross stitcher that you want to transfer it into what you're doing and on doing it on the machine. So if you go to cross stitcher and scroll down here, you don't have to do this now, but there's a thing in here for hand I must have not gone far enough or I went too far. There's a thing in here that talks about how you're transferring from a hand one to the screen. 
which I saw on my one at home, but I don't see here. Anyway, you can look at help at your leisure when you can't sleep tonight. <laughs> okay. So then we're going to change the width to 50 and change this to 50. And even though we're making it 50, 50, see, you got to uncheck the proportional because it doesn't work exactly as advertised. Okay. So put in a 50, 50. All right. And see here on number seven, she says you can go back and adjust. Oh, you can from right here. But if you say finish, it's too late. You got what you got. So I'm going to go ahead and say finish. Yeah. All right. So when you guys look at your screen, this isn't too bad. But see how the lines are not right on top of the actual lines that were on your software thing. So if they're really whacked off, you should go back. And um, if it's giving you double vision, go back and mess with that perspective again. Any kind of questions about what's happened in there? All right. So right now, I'm on number 10. There's only one color showing up in our design palette. Everybody just has a blue there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add the rest of the colors that are in this bell to our palette. So, let me see here if I'm still at the right. I want to be on the view tab. I'm on the view tab. So, on the view tab, if this is too bright, this works like any other place where we have a background picture where you can grab this slider and fade it in or fade it out, depending on how much you want to see at the time. So for right now, I'm going to make it so I can at least determine what these color colors, color crosses are going to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to add about five colors to our palette. So what we're going to do is go down to that bottom again and get your little eyedropper. And then take your eyedropper, and the first thing I want you to do is get a cross or go on the color where the yellow is. Okay, and when you click on that, you're going to get your little color palette cut up. And uh, I'm just going to use the 2596. It doesn't matter. That's what it selected. And I'm going to use that and go ahead and say, okay. And then you notice over here when you do that, that the yellow showed up now in your color panel. All right. And if you're stuck here and it won't pick up a color, you can always use your add color down here at the bottom and it'll click up your uh, all your colors and you can pick from there. Okay. So now we don't need that blue that's up here. So we're going to click on the blue one and then we're going to come down over here and click on the the trash can and that'll get the blue off of our uh out of our way okay so let me see here if we're supposed to okay let me see here i think we got to click the rest of the colors Click on any yellow. I did that. We did that. Okay. Now we're going to the create tab. And that was the bottom of page five. Okay. So now we are going to select the full cross. And then click on the color you selected for the darker pink. Oh, we were supposed to put all the colors in. I thought we were, but now I'm losing. Hang on. Let's add the rest of the colors. Okay, I was just kidding. Let's go back to, well, I think we can do it. No, let's go back to, I think we can do it from here. Okay, let's get the eyedropper. 
And let's click on the pink. And just pick a pink, say okay. Uh, pick a darker one for this one because we have a dark pink and a light pink. So dark pink, okay. Then we want to go click on the light. Oh, uh, let me see if I, lo I think I lost my eyedropper. Get my eyedropper again and click on the light pink. Pick a light pink, say okay. And then we have this color down here. It's kind of uh, looks like orange to me. So get your eyedropper again. Click on the orange. Uh, say okay. All right. So then the next thing we have to pick is the outline. So you guys, when you pick this outline color, I would recommend you pick something dark because uh, I had to see it and it was getting tough. So go ahead and click on that outline and I would pick a brown or something that you know you're going to be able to see later. So mm -hmm. you should have five colors now that are actually in this bell. All right. So now we're going to go to create, which I'm still there. And this time we, I want you to go back and pick that yellow color, click on that yellow, and then click on full cross. Okay. So what you're going to do now is let's go in here to this yellow, and I'm going to start clicking and just dragging. See how fast I can stitch? Okay, so you can sit here and play around and do this till your heart's content. If you accidentally go over in that one, you can just do an undo and it'll undo everything I just did. So then you can start again. I did too many undos. So pretty quick. And even if you bounce all over the place, the software is smarter than us and it will do it in a logical order. So, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to use another tool that'll do a flood fill. So I'm gonna go down here on the bottom and get my zoom, get my zoom tools, which I hiding under my meeting, okay? And let's uh, zoom into this lower left corner of the bell. Okay. Now, um, so what you can do is basically isolate this area and then you can use the flood fill. So to do that, you're going to, um, we're going to use the cross flood fill, cross flood fill. These are tough words for me to say. I'm going to click on that cross flood fill, flood, flood fill, and then click on the full cross. And what you're going to do is click along the edge of this guy. My whole screen goes yellow. Well, it should flood fill then. So un, uh, un, unzoom if it's filling the whole thing. So I think I got to go up like this too. And you can keep moving so you don't have to individually click these. Okay, so I'm just going to rough out this area. <laughs> and I think I got enough. Okay, so now I've basically, hopefully I have properly selected that area. Oh, so okay. now, Carol, what you have to do is isolate that that area and then flood fill. Right. Right. So like, let's see if I if I isolated it enough. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I understand now. Okay. 
Okay. Do you guys see how that works? Yeah. It's pretty cool, right? It's, I mean, it's better than you sit in there going row by row. So, um, okay. Now, so if we wanted to do the same thing, let's say we want to do the same thing with the orange. So I'd come down here and click on my orange. Oh, and I see I lost the color while I was doing something. Okay. So on the orange, you're going to select the full cross. We got the orange. And now you would do the same thing. So kind of highlighting. And you can hold that mouse down and just drag it. You don't have to click every little point in. Okay, so we'll do one more of these that give you the idea what's happening here. Okay. Did it work? Uh -huh. okay. So we're. Yep, do it around. I don't remember ever doing that. Okay. I don't know if we could do it. I mean, it seems really easy. So I've highlighted the orange area, then I'm going to cross flood flu, and I'm, and I'm clicking in there, and there you go, the orange is done. So let's say you're going along and you're you might have put something you're not sure it's at the right place. Um, on number 22, she tells you to hide the crosses. Well, there's an instruction missing. So on number 22, hide the cross is not on the create page. Hide the cross is on the home page. So so on number 22, you want to write go to the home tab and then click on hide the crosses because then you can see your background again if you want to see where something is so so what happened to me is i had covered up so much of the actual outlines and i wanted to practice putting in the outline after the fact so you're going to need to know where that hide the crosses tool is because I couldn't see these colors of the outline that was on the picture. So, so hide it and then go back over to the create tab again. So your background should still be hidden. And, and the reason we're hiding it is so we can put in the outline because your crosses could end up covering the outline. And I have to do one more thing, you guys, because for some reason, my brown color for the outline disappeared. So I'm going to pick a color, get my eyedropper, pick that color again, put on some brown so I can see it and say OK to that. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to be working in this here, this area on the backstitch knots. So we're going to use the backhand free freehand backhand freehand back stitch. These are a lot of tongue twisters. So I want to click on that. And what how here's how you're going to use this guy. So watch for a sec. So I'm just going to start and drag it across the line. And when I get to a place where I need to turn, I'm going to release and it'll draw in the line. I'm going to undo, sorry, because I didn't switch to my brown. OK, switching to my brown. I'm going to do it again. So you're going to drag it until you have a place that you have to turn. OK, so that was a bad. I, I'm way too high, but OK, we'll pretend I'm not. So then you're just going to keep going on. And when you anytime you release it, it's going to fill in the line so you can see what you did. So drag it. I'm stopping there so I can turn. So anytime you want to make a turn, release the mouse and then it'll fill in. All right. 
So one thing to remember is even if we're erratic and following the pattern, so if I go here, I let go, and I go over here, and then I lose my way and decide I want to go down here and then go up here. It doesn't matter. The 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 program is smart enough to do this in a logical area area. It won't jump around like erratic like I was jumping around. Um okay. So under the note on number 24, it's, it tells you right there, it doesn't matter where you place, um, what order you place the back stitches, it'll always do it in a logical manner or whatever it thinks logical. And also if you put in some French knots, um, it'll also do that at the end. It won't do that in the middle of the design if we did it in the middle of the design like we would now. So. I know we didn't finish this, but let's go up anyway, and let's go to the design player. And I want, I know it's only a partial design, but I want you to look at it anyway, because even though I was erratic, and I'm sure you guys clicked yours in in a perfect order, um, it'll, it'll make me look good here, watch. So I'm gonna speed it up, and you can look at yours, or you can look at mine, but it doesn't go over itself. It'll just put the things in the right order. See, it did all the gold, even though I jumped around. And then the orange, same kind of thing. See how it kind of does the base and then it goes and fills. And then you definitely saw me jumping around with the back stitch. So watch what it does. It, it took it pretty logically based on the fact that I didn't do anything logical. Okay. So that is, um, that is how that works. So if you, this would be if you scanned in a picture, which I have one I would like to do. Uh, you scan it in and then you could do this and you really don't have to fill it in click by click. You got some tools to make it happen fast. Um, I'm going to zoom back to fit here in a minute when I move this out of the way. I'm going to zoom to fit. Okay. And then if you want to look at your crosses again, you're going to go back over to the home tab and unhide the crosses. And then you can see what we had filled in and where the outline was. Um, so you're going to go ahead and save it or save as. And again, it's going to save it as a KRZ. Then you can export it and do kind of all the regular stuff that you would do with the design. Nope. So, so that's for if you scan in a picture, scan in a cross, and doing it. I don't know. It's pretty quick. I think it's pretty cool. Questions on those two exercises? Okay. So now we're going to go on to the next one. And I am going to close this one so that my computer doesn't um, get too overwhelmed here. So we're going to go ahead and get a new window again and then go down to cross stitch again. This time we're going to say, take an existing design that's in the software. All right, so we're going to load an existing cross stitch design. And say next and load a design. And this time we're going to browse down into the cross stitch again. Cross stitch samples. Uh, and we're going to go to the cross stitch sampler. And we are going to go to flowers and leaves. 
one and we're going to scroll down to flower number 17 krz uh, okay we're going to click on that one and oh, maybe i gotta move this thing drives me nuts let me see if i can make it load without hurting myself can't get to can't what if you double the... click on it what's that try double there clicking on the name there we go ay, ay, ay. okay so you got that cute little flower and we don't have to do anything else so go ahead and say finish uh, so uh the width is less than the height and so we're going to go into the design properties which is number five and we're going to click on this and we're going to change the width of the picture to 17 and change the height to 72 and when you do that it should match the numbers that she has on the sheet under number six and uh, go ahead and say okay so you should have something that looks like that so one thing that I didn't realize, and she's telling us here, is down on the whoopsie left-hand side of your cross-stitcher, whenever you're in cross-stitch, your select tools are available right here. The box, the lasso, the point, uh, and select all visible. So we want to click on the select all visible down here, which is one from the end. And you want to drag that onto the top of the flower. Drag on the flower, which we got, uh, sorry, it highlighted the flower. So what you're going to do is drag the flower up to the top. Okay, drag him up to the top. Oh no, this makes me want to make a bookmarker, even though I can't use it on the Kindle. Okay. So, drag that one to the top. Now we want to uh, click duplicate over here. And remember when you use duplicate, it will it will offset it some so you can see the design. Okay. And because I did this before, don't make these two guys touch so we can do a few extra things. So, when you bring him down, let us space right here. You see where I mean? Leave a space so that we can do some other things. All right. Now go ahead and click mirror, which is on the triangle on the side. So now you have the two two of them um, the way you need them. And then go down and click select all visible again. And that was number 10. And now we're going to duplicate one more time. And now drag these guys down to the bottom. And let me see here. You leave a space that'll give us something to do at the other point, another part of the exercise. Okay. So if the crosses are touching each other, the green will not make a jump stitch, but they're not touching each other. So what we're going to do is manually go over to the create tab we're on the green we're going to click on a full full cross and then we're going to add the crosses in here so so that it's one continuous design so that when you stitch this out 
um, it, it won't have any jump stitches. We're just connecting them. Okay. So that's why I didn't want you to have them touching. I wanted you to know that even though you're bringing something existing in, you can still do something like this with it. All right. Uh, so basically we're done manipulating that and we're gonna go ahead and do a save as and you can name it whatever you want or she says flower 17 with four repeats and save and then go ahead and export your design. Okay, so that was editing a uh, existing design. And so you guys, when you have time, you should go in here and look through these samples because there's tons of stuff in here that you could use without starting back at ground zero. All right, I'm not gonna save mine. Again, I'm going to close this one. Uh, no, I don't want to say flop to that. And this time we're going to go and use start a picture or start a new design with no picture. So let me look here. And this is the one where I got in trouble. So I'm going to point something out before we start. All right. So uh, go ahead and relaunch your cross stitcher. Okay, and I'm at the part four on page nine in case you wanted to follow along. So I'm gonna let that load. Okay, and we're going to start a new cross with no picture. So the bottom one, go ahead and say next. And we're gonna set the design size. Um, and change the cross to 2.0. And we're gonna make the width and the height 90. If your proportion got checked, uncheck it. Ah, and then go ahead and say finish. Finish. All right. And we're gonna go from finish to multiply tab. So click on the multiply tab. And I'm moving over to page 10. And these are the different kind of multiplies. You'll recognize they kind of look like some of the stuff from Encore. So click on, you gotta click on him. And then the first guy should be automatically highlighted. Uh, to reflect a, a cross. If it's not selected, go ahead and click on it. All right. So now I want you to look at number six. We're going to go and do an insert. And we're going to go to my, the samples again, cross stitch, and then KRZ, open that up. So look here now where we have bud two, buds one, buds two. So look close at what we're loading. Right now we are loading buds one. Maybe, okay, so click on buds one and tell it to open. Oh, let me see if I can double click with so I don't have to, okay. All right, so. Now, let me see if I can see that other line. Okay, so um, the design will appear in the middle. So I want you to drag it to the side. So grab him and drag him over to the side. And oh, looky there. You see the guy that's reflecting across. So get him on the edge all right and click outside uh click outside if you can see okay get unselect him all right so now we're going to go and go reflect across and down so 
Hover over them to make sure you got the right one. Reflect across and down. Okay, so click on him. And now we're gonna go do insert again. Now, pay attention to what it says to insert. <clears throat> you are doing the one that says buds two. Ask me how I know that the other one is not the right one. <laughs> so buds two is what <laughs> buds two is the one you uh you're looking for because we wouldn't want to be confused by our buds, right? Like, right. are you kidding me? Okay, so we got him. Now we're gonna go to the home tab and we're gonna tell it to rotate. Okay, and then we're gonna drag, uh, oh, sorry, we're gonna mirror. So top center, we're gonna mirror him. This one right here, did it mirror? No. Okay, I'm gonna drag it. So you're gonna drag him to the upper left and you're gonna see those other four going crazy and I'm gonna try to click the mirror key. There it goes, okay. So then you're gonna drag him. So look at your picture. So he's kind of setting on top. Like about there. Okay. See the funny thing on mine, I don't know about you guys, but I couldn't see until I moved the second design in. I couldn't see my 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 horizontal line. I could see my vertical one, but not my horizontal one. And you really want to get that design over here into the um, middle. But I I guess it's okay. Um, so drag that to so it's where the picture is. Oh, see, that's not good. I got to drag it up farther because. Okay, right. So fiddle around. See, if I bring it down, then these two are overlapping. So you gotta... So, I'm going to take it up into this corner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go do box select after that. And if I box select this guy right here, will it let me? No, it won't. This is what I did. I just put crosses in. Don't do what I did. Because what I want to do is grab this guy here and move him up onto the center line. And then everything will line up. So let me try uh, freehand. So if I circle this, oh uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it like it is because you see I'm laying down crosses. I don't wanna do that. Uh, let me uncheck it, go back over there. Oh, 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 okay. I'm gonna let it right where it is. Okay, so you wanna click off to, to release it. And she tells you what the dimensions are of where it should be, two down from the top. All right, so you have to go over to multiply and it's still on. So we're gonna turn off the multiply or you'll keep doing what I just did. Um, and now we're gonna go add some letters. All right. So on the letters, we're going to go to the viewer and we're going to go to the modern category. Whoopsie. So you can see a bunch of these letters in here are designed right for cross stitch. Uh, I think a lot of times we don't remember that they're here. I know I didn't remember that they were there. Uh, uh, and then go sans cross nine. And then we're going to go up here into the letters and write welcome baby boy or welcome whatever you want to write. Oops. Or if your keys or fingers are on the wrong keys, well, oh, well, come. 
and then uh, we're going to put a return in so it's on a separate line. Baby boy. Okay. And then I'm going to make my alignment selection before I do it. And then go ahead um, and check apply. And then you can drag him on down in there. <clears throat> And because I don't have the things at the right space. So now you see why you needed to put these rings on that other cross center line. And I don't know if it's my eyes, I can't see it, but I can't see it. So, mm -hmm. all right. So that was creating a design uh, from nothing, basically, just picking some, no picture or anything. Okay, you guys are awfully quiet. So <laughs> if you love the baby boy, you can save him and export him and stitch him out tonight. And if you don't, you don't have to. Uh, at the bottom of the page, he has a couple little things that folks have made uh, using the multiply feature. So there's a whole bunch down there if you wanna try to guess what she used and make those. And I'm gonna close this guy out. Since you didn't have any questions on that one. And then we have one more little deal to do. Is everybody hanging in there? Yep. Yep. All right. So we're gonna do one more and then we'll call it a Friday. <laughs> so get a new page again or a new start and we're going to get the cross stitcher again. Can you believe it? I don't know. It's really cool. I just need time to play. I don't know about you guys, but I would like more play time. All right. So I am on page 12 at the top and we're going to create our own pattern this time. And so we want to go load an existing cross stitch design. And uh, we're going to we're going to say next and we're going to load a design. And we're going to go to the KRZ. Under cross stitch. KRZ, yes. Okay. Now, for your confusing, confusing factor, we're going to use bud space two. All right, not buds two, bud space two. And load him onto your screen. And he's going to come up looking tiny there but he's gonna be big in your face when you say finish. Oh, did my mouse just, oh, okay, finish. Okay, and he came up bigger than day. Did he come up bigger than day for you guys? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, good. All right, so we want to select all visible from down here on your status bar. So select all visible. And then we're gonna go to the pattern tab. All right. So click on the pattern tab and then click create a new pattern. Okay. And uh, we're gonna name the new pattern Bud2. Why would we want to name it Bud 2? All right, so name it Bud 2. And uh, notice that the size is 15 by 5. And we probably can't even see it all at once. Okay, so say okay to that. So you just now have created your own uh, pattern. So we're gonna go file new window again. 
One more time. And then we are going to start a new cross with no picture. Start a new cross with no picture. Say next. And uh, on the design size, we're going to, it mine's at two, change yours to two if it's not. And this time we're going to make the 100 by 100. Unchecked proportional if it's checked. And uh, go ahead and click finish. And go to the pattern tab. And then over here in the category, click the drop down and go down to my patterns. And looky there, there's your bud too that you just created. So uh, select it. Go to the Create tab and set the pattern fill to pattern fill and set the outline to none. And let me move my meeting stuff out of the way. Okay. So now we're going to use the shape creator right here. So we are going to choose shape three. And again, the shapes are not numbered, so you gotta hover over them to see what number they are. So the square is actually number three. So click on that and then click place the shape. And you should have the little square there in the middle of your uh, screen. And there's uh, seven, there's 100, 120 shapes in there in case you need them. Or you can always draw your own shape uh, if you want to. So what you're going to do is take this guy and bring him up to the top left corner. And... I'm getting wobbly here. Yeah, that's close enough. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is make the rectangle the width of the design by five grids tall. Now, when she's saying five grids, she's meaning these itty bitty ones inside here. So I'm going to take it all the way across and five grids. I was trying to make it the whole big one. And you can do that to entertain yourselves as well. All right. And now, when I get it where I want it, I will right click. <laughs> and you got just made your top border. Okay. So your shape three should still be selected. And we're going to go put in another one. So, we could use reflect. I thought we did this across the bottom. Um, move the shape. Okay, so click that again. Take your shape and move it down to the bottom left corner. And I'll show you what happens if you do what I did, which was go like this. Yesterday when I was practicing, and then if you right click, you'll get a whole bunch of those little suckers, which is not what she wanted to do, but I was doing that to entertain myself. So I'm going to do it the right way, which was bring it down here into the corner. We and then squish it down and drag it out and over. And right click and it fills in with your little ones. That is, I don't know why it's putting that other piece in there, but I'm not good. Did your guys do, did you, did yours put that other little piece in there? Like I must have not got the whole thing or something. I don't know why it did. I'm gonna try it again one more time and see if I can make it so I just get the part I want. Okay. 
Let's see. I don't know if I'm doing something or when it's selected, it didn't get it all. Okay. Click. Oh yeah, it's got it in there every time. Do you have the red on the bottom of yours, Jewel, Ju Judy? No, you have to have it right on those lines. Otherwise it grabs the next square. And it's trying to fill in the next one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just it's don't just have the- you position your box or how big it is too. Okay. I didn't have this trouble at home. It could be me fussing with this different computer, but okay. So anyway, right there, you got the beginning of a sampler uh, built that you could do in two hours instead of 200 days or years or months. All right. So let me just show you real quick. She doesn't have it on here, but I do want to show you one thing. So down at the bottom, you see how she has that crazy little thing in a crazy shape so let's say you wanted to make your own shape and you went to point line so you could make any shape you wanted and you're just going to click your points in you guys have all seen this in other parts of the program so you can make any kind of crazy old shape and if i right click there you go I mean, so you think that would be something hard or crazy, but but you can use that uh, freehand shape tool. And then if you love that beautiful thing you just created, go ahead and save it. <laughs> so that's uh, that's pretty much the exercise. I it's a really thorough co coverage of the tools. I think. <clears throat> There's a lot more than there used to be. Oh yeah, this it used to be archaic, right? I mean, it was it was pretty bad, and I think Meg Meg has probably done more stuff with crustature than anybody I know. She's probably sleeping right now. Um, <laughs> do you guys have any questions on what we did? Mm -mm. No. Uh -uh. I mean, it's pretty reminded of what we can do. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a really well written because it, yeah. it, it does remind you. Yeah. OK, well, that's what I have for today, you guys. I do have a question. All right. Well, why are my samples not showing up in my sonet? I had to go to Premiere 2 to find them. Well, well, well. <laughs> Has this happened to anyone else? Is it, you have to download those separately, don't you? Well, I had the same thing happen to me, Liz, on my uh, on one of my other computers where the samples had disappeared. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> and I, what I ended up doing was copying them off of one computer and putting them on the other one. But <laughs> uh, yeah, but you can go, like Judy was saying, go back to the place where the updates are and try to take uh, the fourth one down, I think is the one that's, um, the sample file. It says the samples for the exercises. Uh, they and, did and Liz, so if you get something crazy when that happens, I would just call them on the phone, Liz, because it, the one day I was trying to do it, I was only getting uh, some 100 samples and they were not in folders or anything. It was a mess. Yeah, they just, they're gone. They're just gone. So that's what happened. That's what's happening on my Mac that I'm running boot camp on. And I reinstalled them from a stick and it's wiped them out again. So I don't know. I would just call them, Liz, okay. if you can't get them to come back. Okay. But, but, but the one thing is with this, my Sonet, it doesn't put them. It doesn't always put them back where we're used to seeing them. You have to manually move them down under uh, my sonet. Did you have to do that, Judy, or no? Yes. They still come in as a zip file. Yeah. You have to unzip them and make a folder and 
copy them and into then, it. <laughs> well, I'm gonna yeah. call them because I you know, I just went yeah, out just, and picked them up. Right. It. It. I, I can't explain it because I got the same issue as you do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> Okay, so I don't have anything else, you guys. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 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 Bye. Happy, Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Okay. Thank you. Happy Bye. Weekend. Bye.